Okay, so this video is about handling a complex MIDI setup where you have multiple controllers um, all doing different jobs. Um, we're going to go over some of the uh, potential issues that you're going to run into when you have multiple controllers trying to do multiple things. So what I have here is my Launch Key Mini, my Arteria Beatstep Pro, the Fader Fox UC3, and the Ableton Push, all together um, doing all kinds of different jobs. So let's, let's talk about what you might end up running into if you try to use all these controllers at the same time. The, the first and most obvious one is when I play a key on any of these controllers, I've got multiple I've got controllers trying to do everything all at once. So how do we differentiate which controller is doing which job? Well, if you go over here into your MIDI from area, so long as your preferences is right, um, you should be able to select all of these different MIDI devices to do specific jobs. So let's say I want my mallet stab voice to just come from the Novation Launch Key Mini. So I'm going to just select the Launch Key Mini. And now, it works on that channel. However, I'm still getting notes from other... From other uh, instruments. Let's see, like, what is, what is the push doing? We've noticed now that because I've selected the Launch Key Mini inside of the, uh, the Mallet Stab track, this first track here, the push, as well as the Arteria, can't play the Mallet Stab, but they're still playing all kinds of other voices. So what I'm going to do is assign each one of these to a different area, a, a different controller, and we'll go from there. Okay, so Street Bells. I want that to come from just the Arteria Beatstep Pro. So I'm going to choose the Beatstep Pro for this track. What we're running into here is that the Beatstep Pro is trying to play both of these voices, even if I select a different, even if I select a different controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and select the Beatstep Pro in here, and there's two different MIDI channels that are happening here. So if I play the first sequencer, it comes down channel one. If I play the second sequencer, it comes down channel two. So we can take it a step further and delineate channels for each one of these voices. So now I've got the bass is coming out of sequencer two. If I go to sequencer one, I've got just sequencer one and then uh, I've got just channel one and then the mallet stab is on its own voice. Let's take it a step even further and say that we just want the drums to be just the push. Okay? And the push happens to put put out um, it happens to put out channel 16 so I can just so I can just assign that there. And now I've got all these voices going down their uh, their different channels, okay? So I've also got my um, my UC3, and I've got that mapped to some of these macros over here. Um, so I can add like reverb and stuff. And the reason I put that there is it's not gonna <clears throat> have trouble communicating with all these other uh, controllers. It's just there so that I have extra effects. So let's say I'm playing my... I want some reverb. That's what my uh, UC3 can do. Um, all right. So yeah, that's pretty much it. This is the uh, this is a complex MIDI setup, and this is how you make sure that each controller is doing um, a different thing.